So after we have revised some of the knowledge, okay, on the cell molecular biology and uh, again on the gene liberation, so now we can move to our topic, gene deep marker. So without you realizing, actually, for your PCR, okay, primers, okay, the reason of the we 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 need to include the PCR primer in our PCR reaction is because you only want to study the certain part of the genome, and this part of the genome usually is what we call the genetic marker. So there are, so for animal, we usually we are focusing on the nuclear DNA, okay, and for for and also for organelle we are focusing of the animal we are gene we are focusing on the mitochondria DNA, okay. So we're going to discuss more in detail about the mitochondria uh, the ribosomal RNA gene and also the mitochondria gene for the animal. So in the next lecture, we're going to discuss more about the plant and other organism, okay, and prokaryote. So DNA genetic marker is a gene or short sequence of free free, uh, DNA to locate other gene in the genome. Okay, so actually this is your primer. So it's a short one that help you to locate other gene in the genome. So the in the genome can be in nuclear DNA, mitochondria DNA, and or chloroplast DNA. Okay. So the, the the region you are interested in is this one, okay? So usually you want to study this region because this region usually uh, provides sufficient variation, okay, in the genetic. So it's, there's some information for us to use for population genetic analysis, analysis or phylogenetic analysis. Okay. So the rate of the nucleotide substitution during the evolution or the mutation. It's different from different type of the DNA. Okay, usually the this substitution rate is ten times faster than the nuclear DNA, even within a cell. Okay, so you have the nucleus DNA, you have the DNA in the nucleus. Okay, you also have the DNA in the mitochondria. Okay. The DNA in the mitochondria is evolved 10 times faster than the nuclear DNA. But somehow you don't want to have too much variation, otherwise, uh, there must be a substantial homoplasy and there's a saturation in the mutation. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, let's say the original session is A, T, C, G, G, C. Then the next generation is A T G A. Okay. Then you have the A A G A. Okay. So in this case, the in this case, the mutation is not too much. Okay. You still can recognize what is the changes. So for this generation, to this generation is C to A. For this one is T to A. But somehow, if this gene is very, uh, is evolved very very fast. It might after that the next generation might change to A G G A and A T G C. So now you can see after the in the fifth generation the sequence is exactly with the same as the first generation. If you compare them, you might you might conclude that there might be no mutation or no genetic variation. But in fact, actually there are genetic variation. It's just that there are too much variation and there are too many mutation happen in the same place. So we want to avoid this. So we don't want to have too much variation, and also we want to make sure that there will be no too many, no much variation, so we can make our alignment easy. So we're going to discuss more about this in the next few lecture. <coughs> so I can explain briefly now, since we already mentioned twice. So now let's say now you have two sequences. A T. So it's a very very long sequence. Okay. <clears throat> so
So just look at these two sequences. Okay, let's say these two sequences are obtained from different individuals. So before we can study the genetic variation, we need to align them and compare them, see how much the difference. So in this case, can you can you tell how much of the difference between these two sequences? It's not easy, right? So the easy way is to recognize the part which is conserved. Okay. So for example, I can see that there's a part. Okay. So for example, this one. So I just do it again. So I just write in blue for this sequence. So for example, T, C, A. A, T, T is not here. So A, T, T, C is not here. But somehow there's another one here. T, A, G, G. Then in this here, I can align something like A, T, A, C. Yeah, so I have two extra. I said to put the dash. So because they are a part that I can recognize okay, and compare with the another part, so this is a concept part, so then I can use this part to do the alignment and study the part that is different. Okay, so now I know that there are a lot of the mutation, one, two, three, four, and also there is a deletion or insertion, that means intel region. Okay. So this is what I mean the alignment, DNA sequence alignment. So since there are many different types of markers, so which marker is better? So it really depends on the research question and the objective of your of your of your study. And different type of DNA have different mood of the inherited inherit, inheritance. Okay. For example, for mitochondria DNA, it's a uni and effectively haploid and it's modern chronal inheritance and it has a very rapid rate in the best substitution <coughs> okay so this is what means the haploid and diploid so that means that for mitochondria DNA it's only passed from maternal side Okay, philosophy from mother to the offspring. Okay, so that means that you have your have your mitochondria DNA the same as your mother, not from your father. Okay, and your mother also have the mito so your mitochondria DNA is from your mother, but your mother mitochondria DNA is same as your grandmother, so the mother of your mother. Okay. And for chloroplus DNA, it's also uniparental. For nuclear DNA, it's recombinant and diploid. Okay. So for your nuclear DNA, you get you your 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 source of the variation is from your parent. Okay. From both mother and father. So which one you want to use actually is depend on the research question and which level you want to study the population level, species level, or even higher level. So for this one, we we'll discuss more in the next few lecture when we. We study a few cases, example. So all gene can be selectively amplified by using PCR. Okay. So by using a specific pair of the primer, the DNA in a particular DNA region. Okay. So this is a slide from the previous lecture for PCR. So at a very specific annealing temperature, depend on the sequence. So usually the primer is designed to match the non-region, okay, to amplify the unknown region. So the non-region means it's called conserved region. So for different individual for a species, this region, this this region of the genome, this region of the DNA, is expect to be the same, okay. So that's the reason why you can ident you can design a primer. You know the sequence of the primer you have to design. So that they will add to that particular re region, okay. <clears throat> so so that we can we can study the unknown region. So it's, what I mean unknown region is not really unknown. It's just that we know what is the uh, the the name of the region, the characteristics of the region, but we don't know exactly what's the sequence because this is a region where the mutation happen, and each individual is different.
and the and the lean temperature is depend on the primer sequence. Okay. So we go more into the nuclear DNA. <coughs> so the nuclear DNA can be found in nucleus. So for example, for human, okay, you have you have forty six chromosome, and the genome size for this genome size because this number of the ATCG, and you have two copy for each cell. Okay, for nuclear for mitochondrial DNA. It's found in the mitochondria here. Okay. For nuclear is here. And you only have one chromosome. And for human mitochondria DNA, the size is very small. And for this you have more about more than one hundred copies per cell. So in one cell, okay, you have hundred of copies of the mitochondria DNA. Okay, because in each cell you have more than one, one mitochondria, right? Okay. <clears throat> so before I go into detail, so there are a few things that uh, we have to know. So just now we said that we select certain gene that we want to study, and it, of course each gene has some function. So one of the popular genes that we use is a ribosomal RNA gene. So it's a it's a it's a it's a RNA molecule that make the ribosome. So it's in, across the different organism, this ribosome have the same function. So that means that they are very similar in the design and the function of all different cells. So it's making it's it's, it's comprised of two subunit, large subunit and small subunit. So each subunit actually is a is a is a is a making of the RNA molecule and also the pro protein. So both large subunit and small subunit is very important in the in the translation to translate the RNA into the protein. Okay. So the main difference between the U in the in the ribosomal gene is the between the eukaryote and prokaryote cell. So this is the diagram. So you can you can you can see that <coughs> here is a here is a prokaryote cell. Sorry. So here is a prokaryote cell. Okay, this one on your left hand side, and this is a eukaryote cell. Okay. Then for each ribosome. You have two subunit, large subunit and a small subunit. Okay, and for each subunit, it's making of the from the RNA molecule and also the many different types of protein. Okay. And you can see the there's a number here: 70s, 80s, 60s, 40s. So actually, this is the the size of the subunit. Okay, so <clears throat> we're focusing on the RNA gene. Okay, so this is what called the RNA gene. Okay, so this is a ribosomal RNA gene. So this is a gene that transcribes the RNA. So this is the DNA. So this is part of the DNA they use to transcribe the RNA. So this is the RNA. So you can see the 18s, okay. You can see the 5.8s. You can see the 28s, okay. So this is what we call the ribosomal genome, okay. So this is a ribosomal gene, the blue color, okay. And then in your cell, there are many copies of this gene, so it always repeat, okay. And between this uh, copy, there is a NTS, okay. There's a region of the DNA is not not transcribed. Okay. If you zoom in the blue color, you can see this is a arrangement of the gene. Okay. So there are two subunit. So we're going to repeat that a little bit more later. Okay, emphasize a bit more. So there's a small subunit and a large subunit. So the name of the subunit, if you usually they mention in terms of the 16s or 
I did S, the large subunit is 26S or 28S. So for prokaryote, it's 16S and 26S. For eukaryote, it's 18S and 28S. Okay. And <coughs> they also, uh, so in the ribosomal RNA gene, they also a 5.8S gene. Okay. And there's two internal transcript space, what we call the ITS. ITS 1 and 2. Okay. And there's an external transcribed spaces, ETS. Okay. So this six components, 1, 2, 3, 4, ITS 1, ITS 2, 6, okay, is made up of a cluster, or you call a cluster. Okay. And in front of each of these, so it will start with the ETS, 18S, ITS1, 5.8S, ITS2, 28S, okay? And for this cluster, they will have a non-transcribed spaces, okay, between the cluster. Okay? So if you look at the ribosomal gene, so this is how it look like. Okay, so it just keep repeating the same cluster. Okay, so actually it's same as this diagram. Okay, so you have the NTS. So each cluster is separated by the NTS, and then within each cluster you have the ETS, ATS, ITS one, five point eight S, ITS two, twenty eight S. So all this S stands for the uh, unit of measurement. So it's a measurement for the sen sentimentation rate. So it's a, it's a measurement for the particular molecule size and shape. Okay. So you just have to memorize it. Okay. You have to memorize all this for the ribosomal RNA gene. So this ribosomal RNA gene is in the nuclear genome. So now we discuss in the animal concept, okay, in the, in the animal context. So it's a repeat the nuclear gene that is highly conserved in the structure and function. For example, the now just now we have seen the 20S, 16S, 18S, 5.S, there's a function. It's a one of the important important component for your right right ribosome, the large subunit and small subunit. And their function is the same across different cell type and from different animal. So this gene is very conserved. And this cluster repeat many times. Okay. And also just now we also noticed that there's a several region between the gene, the ITS1 and ITS2. Okay. So this region ITS1 and ITS2 is is more is quite variable. Okay, mutation can happen and it will be passed to the next generation and it will be accumulated throughout the general uh, evolutionary time. Evolutionary time. Okay. And this gene is expand, as, as abundant as mitochondrial genome, so it's repeat many times. So, <coughs> however, the, the evolution, evol, evolutionary history, the mutation rate is different for the mitochondria compared to nuclear. It's because that uh, these are the organelle DNA, so same as a chloroplast. In the next lecture, we'll talk more about the chloroplast. We we'll focus on the mitochondria. So these are the theory, okay? Endosymbiotic theory. <coughs> the how the eukaryote cell evolved from the proto eukaryote cell, okay? So at the beginning, the cell is very simple, just con con consists of the DNA molecule, okay, just like the bacteria. Then in, after some time, they have the more complex organelle and internal structure. Okay, you have the vacuole, you have the endoplasmic reticulum, okay, and then 
There are some events that the eukaryote consume and photosynthetic bacteria and evolve into the chloroplast. So actually this is the bacteria. Somehow it has been consumed and called evolve with the, with the cell. And it's same as the mitochondria. So mitochondria are also a aerobic bacteria. Okay. So that's the reason why each of these organelles they have their own DNA. Okay, so this is a theory that we will accept now. Okay. So both have a very similar evolutionary history, okay, and both have a similar function for mitochondria and chloroplast. So mitochondria in animal is to generate the energy for chloroplast, also to generate the energy in plant. But each of them have their own DNA, own ribosomes, and protein components, okay. They have their own ribosome, okay, but their ribosome is different from the nuclear ribosome. So mitochondria is abundant in animal cell. There are hundreds or thousands of copies in a single cell, okay. For example, for the for a for each liver cell con contains up to two thousand mitochondria, so it's a lot to copy. And it's more body in the cytoplasm is encrossed by the double layer of membrane. So this is more on the basic biology of the mitochondria. You have learned this in your basic biology, the cell biology and genetic. So the size of the mitochondria is similar to the size of the small bacteria. Okay. okay. So they have their own ribosomal, own tRNA. So as we discussed before, origin is from bacteria, okay? So it's a free living organ, uh, oxygen metabolism bacteria that have been encouraged by the ancestral, ancestral eukaryote cell, okay? It escaped from the cell digestion and involved in symbiosis. So usually if, if, if the cell encouraged a bacteria, you digest it and consume it. But somehow, for some reason, this bacteria escape from the digestion and evolve together with the with the with the cell and in the in the symbiosis relationship. So it's happened about 1.5 billion years ago. <coughs> However, after so many years of evolution and the symbiosis relationship, and this mitochondria is, is uh, a lot of the gene already uh, missing, okay, and a lot of the function they they lost a lot of function compared to the true mitochondria uh, bacteria genome. So many genes are the, they are they are very important still precise. For example, the gene that take out the oxygen and harness the energy from the oxidation of food molecule. And the gene to produce the the energy, the ATP. So you have learned all this thing in your secondary school about these uh, processes in the cell, how the cell generate the energy. Okay. So this is the ribosomal gene in the mitochondria DNA. This is different from the nuclear DNA. Just now we discussed the 28S, ITS, 5.8S, 18S. Those are the ribosomal DNA of the nuclear gene. Okay. Now we're talking about the mitochondria gene, okay, my, uh, the RNA gene in the mitochondria. Okay. Remember, just now we mentioned for mitochondria, they have their own ribosome. Okay, so they have their own ribosome gene. They also have a small unit, small subunit and large subunit. Okay, so these are the two genes that we can study, and also there's a gene called cytochrome oxidase one CO one. It's a acronym CO one, and also cytochrome B. Okay, so these two two gene also quite conserved. So it's a part of the electron transport change. Okay, in the citric acid cycle. Okay, 
So those are the gene that we can use. So it's a fragment of the DNA we can use. Okay. As a gene deep marker. So we look in detail about the mitochondria gene. So this is a human mitochondria genome. So in this genome, there are two ribosomal RNA. Just now we have seen this. 16S and 12S. Here, 16S and 12S. And 22 TR, tRNA gene and 13 protein encoding region. Okay. So each of these regions can be studied, okay, can be selected, can be included in the in the molecular study, in the phylogenetic study, and it really depends on the objective of your study and the scope of your study. Then you can select which gene that you want to study and select as a marker. So that's all for today's lecture for gene deep marker. So we're going to discuss more next week for the plant and fungi.